You don't have to pay travel money. You don't have to pay me to travel. I can train you in, for example, eight weeks, okay, three hours a day, twice a week for eight weeks, instead of having you take three full days off of your office work. And that's a huge production loss. So just exactly what my colleagues have talked about. We found the pain, we fixed the problem, and we know how to do it. We have the technology, of course, and it's cheaper on the people. So all of that has to do with the fact we have this, this, uh, this business here. Now, I have a question for you. <clears throat> no cheating. I want everybody's hand to go up who feels like this. How many of you in here are going to become, or think you can, think you can become a successful entrepreneur with your own business and make at least one million dollars? I want to see your hands. Why are the rest of you here? <laughs> they made me do it. <laughs> they made you do it. No, I'm serious. If you don't have the belief that you can do it, you're wasting your time here. I came. I don't know how far, 15,000 miles. We came here to raise the hand after you get up. To raise the hand. <laughs> Very good. You have to have the belief first. Okay, now my, my colleagues have talked about how to do these businesses. And my situation is, I'm going to talk to you about, where, can you see that? It's terrible. Can you see the red? Yes. Yeah. It says business ethics. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about. Okay. I'm here to talk to you about this. What have you learned so far from this class? In other words, what did you expect to, to get when you were here? And did these gentlemen meet those expectations? Somebody give me some comments. I want to know. Has it been what you expected or not? How many say yes? How many say no? Good. So they're meeting your expectation. And that's perfect. Because then what's the worst problem is, if my expectations, as the instructor, if I'm going to teach you something, don't match with what you want to learn or you want to learn, somebody's going to be very unhappy at the end. And I don't want it to be my customer. You don't want it to be your customer. If you sell somebody water and the bottom of the bottle falls out and the water's gone when they walk out the door, they're going to be unhappy. How you, what are you going to do to fix that? Someone give me a, a, a solution. What are you going to do? You're going to, no. <laughs> you're going to give them another bottle of water, right? And try and hope that that one, the bottom doesn't fall out. Change the bottle. Change the bottle. Well, that's, that's not your problem because you didn't perhaps make the bottle, but you're selling it to them. So my point is, if they're unhappy, you're going to be unhappy. If you're unhappy, they're going to be unhappy. Everybody's going to be unhappy and somebody's going to want their money back. Okay? So you have to be very careful about this particular problem right here. Now, I ask you, what do you see? Somebody tell me, what do you see? The gate. The gate. Ah, that's, that's good. An impossible construction. An impossible construction. Well, you've seen the rest of it. You cheated. Yes. No, no, I didn't. No. <laughs> you may have seen this before. I don't know. How many of you can see two columns? Two square columns. <coughs> now that I point them out. Okay? Two square columns. You sure? That's what you think. That's what you see as the customer. What do I see as the business owner? Oh, sorry, I reversed it. What do you see? Now, you see three columns, three round columns, not two square columns. So somebody's wrong. What's going to happen next? That's a problem. <laughs> it's not possible. It's not possible. He had it. It's not possible. You cannot construct the city. If that customer expects to see those two square columns, oops, yeah, and I see three round columns at the bottom, somebody's going to be really unhappy, and your business is going to fail. Okay, so that's the number one thing that I have for you. Make sure that your expectations and the client's expectations, now how do you do that? How do you do that? You know what a proposal is, everybody? Right? You're in business, right? Most of you. So you should know what a proposal is. I'm going to give you a proposal. You say, okay, I'm going to teach you this and this and this and this. And it's in writing. Sorry, the world has gone lawyer crazy. 
everybody sues everybody. I don't know about over here. So like, like a contract. A contract. Same thing, yes. Thank you. So you have to have these things in writing. You have to believe you're going to be able to do it. You have to meet their expectations. But you have to have this stuff in writing so that they know exactly what you're going to give them. If you don't have it in writing, what happens? In Romania, you don't get sued. Oh, you don't get sued. That's good. That's, That's, good. Hey, That's very good. <laughs> so what happens in the United States? Well, I go do the training, and two weeks later, and trust me, this has happened to me, okay? Two weeks later, the boss calls me and says, hey, Alan said you did a terrible job because you didn't teach him this and this and this. I didn't tell him I was going to teach him this and this and this. I told him I was going to teach him these other things over here. Now, what am I going to do about this? This is a problem that you have to deal with in business ethics. You have to fix the problem whether you like it or not. Here's another one. I'm going to tell you the problem, the solution in just a moment. What happens if I have somebody else? If I have Scott go out and do the training for me? Scott knows nothing about CAD. Then trust me, that happens as well. Trust me, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Scott. So I have Scott go out and do the training for me. Now the client's really upset. Because I've, I've literally had people do training for me. And, and colleagues of mine do training. And the, the client calls me and says, this guy didn't even know what this is. He, I asked him for a bottle of water, and he brought me a cup of coffee. What's his problem? Now, what am I going to have to do about this? Guess what? I have to take the time to go back to that client and teach them myself. Fire Scott. Sorry. <laughs> get, another, get another trainer. Then explain to the Better Business Bureau. Not well. No, that doesn't go quite that far. Even in the United States, not quite that far. If I'm huge, maybe, but not right now. So you have to fix the problem. That costs money. What was the, the bottom line? Who said the bottom line? The, you got to watch the bottom line. Scott. Scott. Scott did. Yes. If you don't watch the bottom line, you're going to be out of business as well. But more important, you have to watch the, et the ethics. Because if you destroy the ethics, the bottom line will never exist. Never. You'll never get there. Okay? Customers may not always see the things that the way that you see them. That's what I just showed you on that last slide. That is true. Now what do you see? You've seen this before. How many people have seen this before? Okay, I ask you, how many people can see an old lady? How many people can see a young lady, a young girl? How many cannot see either one of them? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, those who can see the old lady, now can you see the young girl? Yeah. Yes? How about, I see. How, about, how about the young girl? Now, now can you see the old lady? Do I need to explain it to anybody or show you where it is? To me. To me. Yeah, yeah see, Sarah, that's okay. That's okay. Look right here. There's a mouth on an okay. old lady. No, I can see it. Necklace. There's the okay. chin. No, there's the nose yeah. of the old lady. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You see, now what have I just done? As, as a business owner, what have I just done? I've taken the step that most business owners will not do. They don't care. It's, everything's on the internet now. If you can't find the right answer there, who do you, how many people can find the phone number on an internet site? They're not there. So I've taken the time now as a, customer, as a uh, business owner to explain something to you. Now you see it. And I've done a very nice thing for you. I've explained it ethically. You know what you're going to see. Okay? What about the young girl? The young girl is actually looking that way. There's her eye. There's her nose right there. There's her chin. Here's the back of her head. Everybody okay? No? I'm not sure. I'm not getting any response. <laughs> Turn her upside down. Turn her upside down. <laughs> I think, I think at this point, I'm probably glad that I didn't do the alternate one. There's, a, there's one that actually has a third picture in it. And uh, you're confused enough with two, so I'll leave it at the two. Oh, no. yeah. oh somebody just got it. Thank you. All right, so what happens now? Well, 
There's a saying that we have that you guys need to know about as well. If you have the, the belief that you can do a business, how are you going to get there? Do you have any idea? Do you have, have the plans? Do you have all the things that these guys have been talking about? Do you have the plans? Do you have the mindset to do it? Do you have the ethics to do it? Um, in other words, what's your target? Anybody go shoot? Do they allow guns in Romania? I don't know. You need authorization. You need authorization. Yeah. That's probably a good thing. Somebody write that down. We've got to take that back to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so if, you're, if you're shooting at something. Yeah, targets. The target. The target practice. Yeah. What happens if you aim at nothing? You shoot again. Why would you aim at nothing? No. Here's why. Here's why. If you shoot at a target, you might miss. If you shoot at nothing, you're going to hit it every time. <laughs> okay, but you understand. You have to have the goals. You have to have the organizational structure. You have to have everything in order to, to get there. But if you don't have those, then you don't have any focus. You don't have any aim. And you're going to hit that target of nothing every time. Don't do that. Be very careful with that. Okay, there's another saying. How many of you have tried to do a business before? Anybody? Several of you. Did you, did you succeed the first time? No. Second time? Yeah. Third time? Right here. Very good. Uh, there's, if you look on the internet on this one, there's a ton of answers. I don't know that anybody knows the correct answer. How many times did Thomas Edison try to invent the light bulb before he actually succeeded? Yeah, it's been said a thousand. That's the, the most common answer is one thousand. But if you ask Thomas Edison, what did he say? No, I did not fail a thousand times. I found out 999 ways not to do it again. <laughs> Not even laugh. That's not. The thing is, don't keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. That's a very powerful statement. If it's not working for you, change something. Change something. Okay? Now, if you have a pencil paper, I'd like you to write something down. I have a couple of books that I want to recommend for you. One of them is by a gentleman named John Maxwell. I don't know if anybody heard of John Maxwell beside you. Very good. Yeah, he's world famous. And it's called The 360 Degree Leader. If you don't have that book and you're planning on going into your own business, I recommend it strongly. Could you please repeat the title? 360 Degree Leader. They have it here? Yeah. Very good. Hey, I know Romanian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try that way again. I'm going to <laughs> anyway, it's a very good book. And the reason it's a very good book is because you'll learn how to let your people lead. Okay? You cannot lead. You cannot do the business all on your own. It's not going to work. It will. You can stay small with one person. You're not going to make a million dollars most likely. I'm not saying you can't. Trust me, I'm, I'm not saying that at all. Just have people around you that are going to do the things that you cannot do and let them lead. The 360 degree leader will let you do that. It will allow your people underneath of you to lead you into better places. Okay? It will allow people to lead each other into better places. It will allow you as the top leader to lead everybody else to better places. Get the book. Um, let's see, there's one more. Uh, it's called, I don't know the author of this one, I'm sorry. It's called Blue Ocean Strategy. Anybody ever heard of that one? Very good. Okay. And I'm sure these are, are you know, you put uh, Amazon.com from over here? Yeah. 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 yeah, they're on Amazon. Um, excellent book. Excellent book. One of the first statements I heard today was, find something that causes pain. Why? Well, everything causes pain. Living causes pain. So what you want to do is find those things that cause pain and make a solution. But you're not going to be the only one in here that makes that solution. 
There's going to be, if, if all of you went after the same business, one of you will, will succeed, generally, okay? Maybe two of you. But the Blue Ocean strategy explains how people like Southwest Airlines did it differently. As far as I know, they're the only company that doesn't charge for baggage. They make you go through these goofy lines where people don't know how to line up in order. I don't know why people don't do that. They can't line up in order, but yet they're the number one selling airlines in the nation, in the world. Because they knew how to do it different most of the time. I'm not going to say every time. Blue Ocean Strategies will help you to figure that out. It'll give you a different mindset. Okay? That's one of the books that I read. Every single day, every single night. I get woke up at 2.30 in the morning with ideas. I know where they came from. You may not. I'll get there in a few moments. I get up and I write them down. And you know what? 99% of the time they work. They work the next day. Bureau uh, is a programmer. I'm a programmer. I had a problem one time. I worked on this problem as a programmer for two weeks. I had no idea how to fix this problem. In the middle of the night, and you're going to laugh at me, you might kick me out the door, that's okay. I had a dream that I was being taught by a professor how to do that, how to fix this problem. And it woke me up. It scared me so bad. It woke, woke me up. Actually, your mind was the professor. See? And I went over to my computer and it worked. Okay? So, that's two books that you need to know about. Keep doing the same thing, and you're going to keep getting the same results. Be very careful with that. Here's another very good saying. The most important single ingredient in the formula for success is knowing how to get along with people. It's not the computer. Anybody can learn how to use a computer. Anybody. I, my my five-year-old son used the computer. My 14-year-old son plays video games all the time. I can't. I don't, I don't care to because it's not productive for me. Okay? You, you like that? That's fine for you. It doesn't help me to extend my business or go places with my business. But if I know how to get along with people, I'm going to be a much better business owner. For what? For the clients? For, for the people that I have underneath of me? And for me? For all of us? So understand that importance. It's not the technology. You know why? Because the technology is going to change again by tomorrow. My first computer. You guys are going to laugh. My first computer in the United States that I started my business with. You can get it in a, a watch, practically nowadays. It cost me $7,000. Now, the laptop that we bring with us can cost $700. And it does a million times more stuff. It's a million times more powerful. That's what I'm saying. The technology is going to change every single day. Okay? You must, this is the ethics part now, the integrity part, okay? You must tell the customer the truth. If you lie to your customers, who's the number one? Well, Scott said it, I think Scott said it. What's the number way, one way that people find out about your business? From other people. It's not the internet, it's not TV. It's from, well, unless you're three o'clock in the morning and you're watching infomercials. It's other people. If you start lying to people and you tell them you're selling a product, and it's not the product you're selling, they're going to fail. You have to tell the truth. You must accept the consequences. Just like when that guy went and taught people, didn't do it correctly, I had to go there and do it for him. I lost the money. I lost the time. doesn't matter. He knew that I fixed it. He is still today my, one of my better clients. Because we fixed the problem, you also have to tell the, the truth to your, uh, your employees. And Sorry, you have to tell the truth to your employees and accept the consequences for your employees. Both of those things. Hard, fast rules. Okay, your best advertiser is a happy customer. You have to make things right. And you cannot do things against your own morals. If, even if you work for me, if I told you, look, I don't care if the, the laptop is broken, go sell it to them anyway, are you going to do it? How many people in here would do that just because you made, you made money? No, that, that's great. I'm glad you're that's honest. Job, I'm glad well, you're I honest. That's that his job. That's your job. Yeah. You're good. You're fine. You need to do that for yourself. 
You know, because people are greedy. Some people are greedy. You have to go out and sell this thing, and if you sell this thing, even if it's broken, you're going to make $50, 50 whatever, your euros, and that's your business, that's your job, and you depend on that. You have to do it. If you think you have to do that, then you have to. And I'm not going to change it, but your customers are going to change it. Okay? You cannot do things against your morals. It will destroy your company. Trust me. Eventually, it will catch up to you. You have to be very careful with that. Now, besides those two books, I'm going to tell you, because the last time I did something similar to this class, I had the question, what kind of business ethics or morals books did I read? I will tell you the answer. And it's one book only. It's the Bible. Thank you very much.